Hi and welcome back to a new video. As you all know, it will still take a couple of days until we can openly speak about 11900K, 11700K weld upcoming Intel CPUs. But for now, luckily, my factory in Germany already started selling the 11700K. And there was a guy, I think his nickname was Mo Ben from overclock.net forums, and he already deleted as 11700K. You probably already saw the images out there. And just based on that single image, we can already draw some conclusions about the CPU and already do some quite interesting measurements and maybe talk about what could make this CPU quite interesting for overclocking. Setting up a cloud server within about 10 seconds for only €2.49 per month? That's what our long-term partner and data center operator Hetzner can provide and they have been on the market since 1997. Hourly based billing with very simple configuration using the Lucid web interface allows to set up your individual solution within a few minutes. Additional features such as load balancer, private networks or a CLI tool are also included. The entire server setup is developed in Germany and thus also GDPR compliant. No required minimum contract period the DDoS protection and unbeatable price performance ratio turned this into a perfect solution. Use the code DEBOWER21 to receive a starting credit of 20 euro valid for three months. Find out more in the link below. That is the 11700K I was talking about, well the image of the deleted 11700K and the first thing I did was adjusting the aspect ratio because it was not perfectly taken from the center but it's still a quite good image when it comes to just the raw resolution and size. And after adjusting the aspect ratio you can see I also added some measurements because we all know that the base dimension of the PCB is 37.5 times 37.5 millimeter. That's the standard size for the PCB for all socket 1200 CPUs, for example, 10900K. And now that we know that the X amount of pixel equals 37.5 millimeter, I can tell you that in my image 27.5 pixel roughly equal one millimeter. And then we can just already do the measurement of the die size on the uh, 11700K and also for 11900K because they will have the exact same die. It is 11.7 times 23.9 millimeters. Now taking the die measurements, we know that this equals a die size of 280 square millimeters. And that is in particular interesting because 11900K, which has 10 cores, only features 206 square millimeters. That also means that the 11900K has a larger die by 34%. 34% while it has two cores less. That is quite interesting. Now Intel already released some slides which we can use to work with to evaluate this CPU further. And in one of those slides, there was also featured a die shot of the 11900K. It was in a weird kind of aspect ratio, but a different website already did the work and kind of fixed the aspect ratio, also did some markings on where you can find the core, the ring, the IO area, the memory clock, the memory controller and the PCI Express area and everything like that. So, and just scaling it down to the perfect size of the 11700K shows that the aspect or the ratio of the image of the die shot from Intel was already correct. Now you can see it on the CPU, but I also had to flip it around because the die shot is seen from the back side while we're looking at the front side of the CPU. And now after flipping it, so we have the memory controller on the right and the PCI Express controller on the bottom, that would be the that would be the location of our CPU core on the chip. Now that we made sure we scaled the die shot to the correct size of the actual CPU, we can also take measurements of the die itself, which can be quite interesting. First of all, we're looking at the core area and the ring area combined, and this gives us a size of 121 square millimeters. And if we take a look at an individual single CPU core, it will have a size of 12.8 square millimeters. And that is interesting if we compare it with the 10900K, because the 10900K has an individual core size of 10.3 millimeter and that is 24% smaller. That means our 11900K has a larger CPU core by 24%. Now you might ask yourself, why is this even interesting? Like why is it even good that the 11900K features a bigger CPU core than the previous generation? And that is because we're talking about the single individual CPU core power density. Nowadays, if we're talking about, especially when it comes to overclocking, we're mostly limited by the temperature, which is a result of the power density of the individual core. So if we manage to kind of keep the latency the same or improve it over the previous generation, which seems to be the case because the 11700K is faster than the previous generation, while it has a bigger CPU core and the power consumption is roughly the same. But if the power consumption st stays roughly the same and we feature a bigger core, 
the energy, energy density is shrinking. And that is great because especially for overclocking, we could in theory at least use higher voltages if we have the same kind of cooling to get the same kind of temperature target on the CPU. So if everything works great, we basically have a bigger die which allows better cooling and we should be able to use slightly higher voltages than in the previous generation, which hopefully allows better overclock in the end. One more image where we can directly compare the 10900K to the 11900K, and you can see that the 11900K is slightly higher and also slightly wider than the 10900K, even though it features two less cores, but it's also a result of the bigger iGPU area. Um, we could take measurements of the iGPU area. If you're interested in that, we might feature that in a different video, but I didn't think that the iGPU of the 11900K is that interesting to us. That's why I kind of neglected it in this part. But the Dancore area and the iGPU area is bigger in the 11900K than in the 10900K, which is also a result of the bigger die, um, while the cores themselves are already 24% bigger. You might have also read it online that Moben killed his 11700K from probably the deleting process. We're not quite sure why the CPU is dead, but there are certain risks involved just by looking at the picture itself. We can already tell that there, there could be some difficulties which we didn't encounter in the 10th generation. Looking at the image, you can find some SMD components on the left and on the right of the IHS and also underneath the IHS, we have those very tiny ones. Again, I just used the image for raw measurement and I could figure out that the right ones are 0405 capacitors, which have about a length of one millimeter and a width of about 0.5 millimeter. The same for the left. And the ones in the center should be 0201 caps. Now just for the deleting process itself, this can cause multiple issues. If we push down from the top, we can most likely kill the 0201 caps. If we push up from the bottom, we can most likely kill the 0402 caps. Now the question will be which of those are more important and if they are gone, will it be a huge problem for the CPU? That is always to be determined and we will definitely figure that out. But there's one more thing we would have to keep in mind and that is especially for direct die because those 0402 caps on the side, they should have a height of about 0.5 millimeters. And if we just take the die height measurements we took from 10900K, because right now I don't know the exact die height of the 11900K, but for 10900K, the die height was 0.5 millimeter as well, roughly. And that could cause some serious issues for any kind of direct die cooling, because if we mount a cooler on the CPU, it will always apply the pressure to the center and to the die itself, right? And if you push down your CPU, it doesn't matter if you're using a direct die frame or not, but you will always bend the PCB slightly. You will bend it more in the center than on the outside part. And if the center has already 0.5 millimeter height and your other components, the SMDs already also have 0.5 millimeter height, there is a very high risk for having some kind of short circuits on those tiny SMB, SMD components. So for direct die, that could be rather complicated, but I will definitely try to find solutions for that stuff. That's just some interesting thoughts I think I had for just 11700K, 11900K I had from looking at the raw images and I thought I'm going to share this with you. All right, so much about this very, very quick videos and some thoughts. Thanks for tuning in, see you next time, bye bye.